Okay, we're going to roll out the scope buggy. So we've got the scope and the camera, and the guide camera, the guide scope, uh, the uh, center ballast weight and the weights on, fully loaded. All the guys got to do is plug in the computer and the power and uh, do your alignment and you're good to go. Well, that was a piece of cake, uh, rolled right in there. Um, now all I got to do is uh, level the jacks. I've got these little uh, one inch PVC end cap and uh, I put this underneath the uh, 5 8 screw jack, fits right in there and that gives it a nice, uh, a larger foot. Also protects the screw jack from grinding and digging into the dirt and the threads and all of that because it'll spin on the bottom of that the PVC end cap. That's it. It's level. Before we begin, it should be mentioned that you will need at least 40 inches to roll the buggy in or out of the house or garage. If space is limited, you might want to consider attaching the wheels underneath the buggy instead of on the side. However, this will raise the platform considerably. If you are handy around the house and have a few basic tools, it should be fairly easy for you to construct the scope buggy pictured here. The process is pretty straightforward and has been done by others in one form or another. So I'm only going to cover what I feel are my major contributions to the design. Here we have the basic buggy platform right side up on the workbench. It is constructed out of 2 by 6 The one quarter inch plywood gussets that reinforce the wheel supports also lock in the tripod and keep it from slipping off the rear. The front end is strapped in with Velcro. The platform bracing is made out of 2x6 ripped in half. There are no nails used in construction and all connections are glued and screwed. The two major sections that make up the buggy platform are shiplapped at the point of intersection and a metal strap is applied to the underside. The extended elevated tongue that supports the front wheel and the rear wheel supports allow the buggy to operate low to the ground. The recommended height is about three inches of clearance. This is done by simply setting the platform up on blocks to the desired height 
and marking the center of the wheel hubs on the rear wheel supports and then drilling a hole to run the machine bolt through. A machine bolt long enough to allow the wheel to run on the smooth part of the bolt while having enough thread to bolt on both sides of the rear wheel supports should be selected. The height of the front wheel support is determined in the same way as the rear wheels. A half inch spacer block used when attaching the front caster wheel provides the necessary clearance for the wheel to operate freely. If you intend on operating the buggy on a concrete surface, then hard rubber tires of 5 inches or more can be used, but 10 inch pneumatic tires provide the smoothest ride and operate better over rough terrain. Here we see the screw jacks that lift the buggy off the ground and are made of 5 8 inch eye bolts or a similar size threaded bolt. Unfortunately, T-nuts are not available in 5 8 inch size, so I used a 5 8 inch nut pressed in blocks of hard maple, or you can use a similar hard wood. The nut is hard pressed into a 1 inch diameter countersunk hole, 1 half inch deep, or the depth equal to the thickness of the nut, to keep it from turning when the jack is operated. The nut is then covered with a 5 8 inch washer screwed down over the top. If desired, epoxy cement or hard wood filler can be applied in the space around the nut, but care should be taken to avoid getting glue on the nut thread or in the hole of the maple block. The jack blocks are fastened to the buggy directly in line with the tripod legs using two four and one quarter inch lag screws and glue. The elevated tongue wheel support is also bolted with a half inch diameter carriage bolt for extra strength. Well, there you have it. That should get you started. Thanks for tuning in to Dakota Starry Nights and Clear Skies.